Welcome to All Things What. This is part 2 of multi-episode series on wave particle duality. If you have not watched the first episode, I highly encourage you to check it out. The link of it is in the description below. In this episode, we will talk about the photoelectric effect and wave-like nature of matter. So taking off where we left last, we were in late 1800s and the debate of light being a wave or a particle had died down. And we had a winner. Light is only a wave. Until this man came around in 1905 to question it. For this, let's explain what photoelectric effect is. In this experiment, we have metal surface with electrons spread out. The little E's here represents those electrons. And if we shine a light at it, in this case happens to be red light that has relatively higher wavelength than other visible light. And when we do this, we observe nothing. If we increase the intensity of light, think of this as a brighter bulb with the same red light. And again, we observe, we actually observe nothing. Now, if we try again with the faintest UV light, which has much lower wavelength or higher frequency, we observe that electrons get ejected from the surface of the metal. This is interesting to note that the maximum kinetic energy of the released electron does not vary with the intensity of the light, but it's proportional to the frequency of the light. So in, in this case, the UV light here has a higher frequency than the red light here. And then the number of electrons released was dependent on the intensity of the light. So if we were to shine a brighter UV light on the surface, more number of electrons would be ejected. So this unexpected observation was something the wave theory could not explain. So in 1905, Einstein formulated this photoelectric phenomena as lights having packets, which later was called photons, and that each photon had a fixed amount of energy. The energy was given by this formula here. H times frequency H is the Planck's constant. And what happens here is that the energy from the photon gets transferred to the electron through conservation of energy. And if the energy is sufficient enough, the electrons will escape and eject. So each photon packet here will transfer its energy onto the electron. And if it is sufficient enough, the electron gets excited and gets ejected. So what does it mean here? It looks like light is following the corpuscular theory. And the century all debate of whether light is a wave or a particle took yet another turn. And it seems that the light exhibits both wave and particle-like behavior. Hence the wave-particle duality was born for light. Einstein eventually went on to win the Nobel Prize for his work on the photoelectric effect a few years later. Expanding on the wave-particle duality, in 1924, Louis de Broglie formulated the hypothesis claiming that all matter has wave-like nature too. The idea was if something thought be a wave can be a particle, can something thought to be a particle be a wave? For this, let's go back to our slit experiment. But this time, instead of light, let's use electrons. Imagine we have a gun that can fire electrons one at a time. So in a single slit experiment, the electrons will go through the slit and appear in the background, while some of them will bounce off in this manner. In the double slit experiment with electrons, we expect the same to happen, where these objects or particles will bounce off the screen, and wherever there is the slit, the electrons will go through and have two targets associated in the back screen. But this is not what happens. What does happen is we get an interference pattern. This double slit experiment was conducted in 1927 by Davison and Germer, which showed that an interference pattern is produced. 
similar to when light was shined. So electron, a particle with mouth, exhibits wave-like behavior. Turns out the same behavior was found to be the case with, for larger objects like atoms and molecules. In fact, all objects have wavelength that is inversely proportional to the mass and velocity. Just that for macroscopic particles such as like a bowling ball or a human being, because of their extremely short wavelength, wave properties cannot be detected. So here we are in the late 1920s. Wave particle duality is a thing. But the question remains, when does the object decide to be a wave or a particle? In the next episode, we will dive deeper into what happens when we observe things closer and what does it mean by the collapse of the wave function. We'll also talk about this man's cat. Who doesn't like cats, right? Stay tuned to part three of this series on all things what?